Welcome back to any Swift tip guys. This is the second part of our tutorial for dynamic frameworks in which we'll put our newly created framework into a separate git repository and add it as a dependency to our project. If you haven't watched the first part and you're curious about how I have created a separate Xcode project and a dynamic frameworks target, I'll put a link in the description below where you can check it out. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how you can use Cartage to add your framework as a dependency. And because the video will run really long again, I'll split it one more time and leave the Git submodules part uh, way of integrating for our next video. Let's start. So this is where we left the project in the previous video. Uh, before starting, let's first make a commit of this so that we can always revert to this state just in case. So for this, I'll go to source control commit and check in all the changes. See that's the workspace file. We'll have to adjust it later, but yeah, for now it's all good. Yeah, this really doesn't matter, but let's make a, a commit. Yeah, like that. Just to be on the safe side, I can also push it. Uh, this directory, guys, is where the project is. If you don't remember or you haven't watched the previous video, this is what the file structure looks like. That's the root of the repository, there is a workspace file, and the main project is this one. And we have uh, separated out the loading view into the dynamic framework already, and it looks like this, it's a separate project. And now what we'll do first is have a look at how you, uh, you can get this in a separate repository and integrate it with the dependency manager called Cartage. It's this thing here. Uh, it's open source. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, when you compare it to CocoaPods, uh, it gives you uh, more freedom in the way you could integrate the dependencies. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, I would say, a little harder for beginners because you have to take care of the linking. But uh, it's, it's a tool uh, that it's easier it's, and more convenient to be used when you are the developer of this framework and you want to develop, uh, you want to write code in it uh, while you're working on your main projects also. So here they have a guide how you can add a framework to an application and they're showing all the like the needed steps for a specific kind of linking but I'll show you another way of linking that is a little different than this one here uh, and it's uh, for me this way that I'll be showing you it's more uh, appropriate when you're developing because you can see the code of the dependency in your Xcode window. Okay, let's start. So, uh, this is the project that we want to extract away. Let's first close this thing and go to the folder structure. That's the project file that we'll be working with. Let's get this and get it out of the Lanhard demo road folder. I'll put it in the documents folder where most of my projects are. It, oh, it says to me that item like this already exists. I'll replace it. Like Maybe it's something called. Okay. So this uh, thing is no longer here. It, it could not it can't be found so now if I open this workspace it will be shown in red 
this is missing you see how we'll fix it now so here I have this loading view now and I'll go inside it I will open it maybe here in a separate tab close this one for now loading view like this okay that's our directory and what we want to do now is we want to create a git repository out of it so git init and we have initialized an empty git repository when you're doing this uh, I have uh, this uh, habit of always first adding a git ignore file to the repository so that uh, when I have files that I don't want to track later I won't accidentally add them and start tracking them so it's always good to first generate uh, git ignore file and there's this really cool website called gitignore.io I found it really useful I use it quite a lot like to create uh, git ignore files and in it you can add tags like this cartridge pots and yeah pretty much all the things that you would like to work with in your git repository and so this will create a git ignore file that will uh, skip tracking the commonly skipped files when you're working with these technologies and now you can come here and edit like this you, you can create a git ignore file and just put the content here save this and you have the git ignore file if you run git status now you see it it's here I'll first add this file and then commit the rest git ignore yep check the status again cool git commit uh, if you're wondering why I'm using command line uh, I prefer to do this from time to time so that's when the new uh, UI like a new front end for git comes out you at least know how it works and when there's something that you can't find in the menu you can always go into a terminal and type the commands directly yeah like this so we we're tracking now our git ignore file and we can add the rest can see here from my camera window but this is what I have typed that's the command and we're all set done it's all good now if I run git status you will see that my uh, directory is clean and so if we now go into this directory and open the project file it will work just fine you can build it you'll see it's all just the way it used to be however it's not linked anymore to this part the linking is broken we will fix it with cartridge at first and then I'll show you how you can do the same thing with Gibbs sub, uh, sub modules right so it builds fine I'll close it for now and go in github no. github.com like this and create a new repository I'll call it loading view 
yeah I don't care about other things so now I have the empty git repository in my account I will show you how yeah just basically I'm just adding the remote and pushing to the master of the remote repository in github it's all good now it's fine if you reload this page you'll see that we have pushed this uh, loading view project here right so something important when it comes to integration with cartridge is that you should have uh, your seam uh, seen uh, build options shared so this tick here has to be ticked if it's like this you should uh, make it like that so that the Xcode build tool will uh, will be able will be allowed to build your target later and so yeah if this is done then pretty much you are all set I think uh, you can uh, also now do the following thing so copy this link uh, actually not the, yeah from here that's the link to your repository I think that that's the same but just in case let's copy it from here and you can go into the project folder the directory of your original project where the workspace is where the workspace is the root of your git repository and make what is called a card file this is the file that holds uh, references to all of your dependencies that you want to include with cartridge in your uh, project so if you add uh, if you add it like this or actually yeah I think this should do the job but there's a no wait let, let me check actually how you you can do it better so if we open the guide to cartridge there's something about the card file and see how you can add it directly in, uh, from github it supports this integration uh, if you want to add it from somewhere else you can use this uh, syntax so git and the link to your URL however I'll do it in this way I'll do it like this and so uh, if I go to my card file again and I just put this as a template I can come and type in this that's my profile on github and this is my repository holding view let's just check again that is that's actually this is uh, the, the thing that I want to type and also you can make a comment on top so that later if you need to go to your repository you have the link here directly but yeah so it's the name of the user and the name of the repository this should all work fine now this is how you uh, embed other dependency to your project through cartridge you, you write it in a card file and then you trigger this command cartridge update and so now when you run it see what happens it says cloning and it clones your project if you uh, look at the git status now uh, you will see that we all, all we just have added this card file and we have deleted the original project so nothing happened now and this is the reason why no tagged versions found for github loading view so what this means is that 
because we didn't we haven't added a version of our loading view and cartridge always looks for a specific version specific tag pushed this was not pulled from there you have two options now how you can handle that if you open your card file again you can say something like this you can go here and say master and this will pull your branch master of this uh, repository and use it instead of a tagged version you can also refer to a commit here a commit name so let's say I want to uh, fetch this commit I can always uh, get its full name from somewhere like here that's uh, and I can put it here and maybe you know already but branches are nothing more than uh, synonyms for commits so you have this commit it's called like this that's its full name however we have a, a alias for it and it's master so it's the same thing uh, you uh, I could also handle this issue in, a, in another way I'll show you how now so instead of adding this master sub uh, like uh, at the end of the line I could just come here and make a tag like this git tag and let's say 1.0 this uh, will make uh, initial version of my loading view so yeah let's do this you can check your tags like this git tag list and you know actually just git tag it will give you instance, uh, all of your tags so far uh, see I created this tag without actually wanting to create it so I, I'll be, I think I'll be able to remove it like this yep so I just have only the stack for now and uh, if you want to integrate it uh, with the tags with the versions uh, you should have these tags not only locally but in your git repository as well the way to push them there is with git push tags like this and now uh, in github these tags are there so you can come here and look at the releases and you see that I have a release 1.0 with this commit so now the three things master this uh, tag and this commit like its full name point to the same thing the same state of the project if I come here and call again cartridge update you see how it's fetching our repository and now it's saying to me that dependency loading view has no shared frameworks so uh, the thing that I have said to you maybe I've left it unticked let's check again it's this thing here uh, now it's hmm, interesting it, it's shared yeah it is shared uh, yeah let's see again it has no shared framework schemes maybe I haven't pushed these changes yeah yeah now I have switched some things like this let's push this change and when we have our scheme shared I think now when we do cartridge update it will be able to build the whole thing 
Yep. See, now it's saying building scheme involving you. And so what happens now is that Cartage creates a directory in the root of your Git repository called Cartage and in it it has two subdirectories. The one of them is called checkouts and the other one is called builds. In the checkout uh, subdirectory you have the whole repositories cloned there but they're not tracked because we have added these directories, these locations in our gitignore file. So if we go again into uh, this place, yeah, the line hard demo, you see that now we have our card file that contains the link to our dependency. Card file resolved, which if we have a look at here, card file resolved see what what its content look like so for every record from our card file we have a exact reference of commit that is to be checked out every time and this is what actually this is how cartage knows what to fetch and if you say uh, there's one other command, cartage, not update, but bootstrap. What this does is when you already have created a card file, it just fetches the exact commit that is recorded there for a given dependency. Instead of trying to pull uh, new updates uh, to it and possibly making it like point uh, possibly updating the card file to point to a newer commit so this is what the card file resolve contains the directory cartridge has these sub two subdirectories that i've said to you build and checkouts checkouts has our projects and builds is what uh, what is is the place which holds the re the products built from our dependencies from the checkouts you have now two options to integrate this loading view framework in your main project main project the Linehart demo project you can just drag and drop this over there and make a change to the project file to link to it you can also use a, a special script uh, that you are adding as a build face to your target in Xcode. It's it was uh, given here. So basically, it's this thing: copy frameworks. And what this script does, like this build face, when you add it to your target, what it does is it finds these framework files and it copies them to your main bundle of the app every time when you're building it and when there's changes in them however we'll take another approach here we are not gonna do neither of those not manually not with this framework like copy frameworks command we'll do it uh, within our workspace uh, and here's how so this loading view project now it's missing because we have deleted it but what we'll do is we'll remove it from here this one look where it where it points it says documents line hard demo loading view directory loading view xcode project however nothing exists there anymore and it and we don't want anything there so we we're just rem we we're just gonna remove this open our project file so not a uh, project directory come to cartage browse for uh, our checkout and just drag and drop this project file here this will update the reference in our workspace file and, uh, and it will now point to a valid location 
it will point to Cartage Checkout Loading View, Loading View XT Project. Yeah, the new location. When you come here in this target, you will see again uh, that this thing still exists, it's added, and we don't have to do any changes here because this uh, basically says. Uh, find whatever it's in our workspace in the project loading view build it and use it it doesn't care about the location you're just giving the location here and so now if you build our project it should all run smoothly and you'll see that it's just working because it was working before Here you go, it builds nicely. What you you could do here is you can add git ignore file if you don't already have one. It's a good practice to always start a repository with uh, such a file. So let's see if I have one. Yes, I have. I have one uh, and I still I am uh, I was still using git ignore for this but what paths I have so Xcode other various settings no so pretty much now if I continue like this and make a commit I will track the cartridge folder and I don't want to do that I don't want to track my dependencies so I will, add it, I will add them to my git ignore file and the way to do this is uh, really simple I can just come here again and use this file and paste it directly so like like this uh, I can let no I can just even create a completely new one git git ignore like this and then go like that and now if we look at git status we'll see that I have modified my git ignore too and the cartridge path is still here let's look at our git ignore file and decide why so here's what options we have for cartridge it says add this line if you want to avoid checking in source code from cartridge dependencies so by default when we have generated this git ignore file it wants to track our checkouts however I don't want to do that I want my checkouts to be completely separate, my dependencies to be completely separate from my project. So I will remove uncommented and now neither build, neither checkouts will be tracked in this repository. I'll save this and go to git status again and see that cartridge is no longer present, pre present. so it's untracked. What I'll do now is I will commit everything and we'll name it like this moved to separated git repository like this and I'll push it to my uh, main projects repo and here you go we have the setup ready there's one more thing that uh, we could revert now at this point uh, if you remember in our card file I, I was pointing to master uh, and if I want the most up-to-date and cutting-edge version of the loading view I can totally do this and keep it like that However, when I, let's say if you're two teams building 
these two repositories separately. Uh, the team that develops the dependency could have a version versioning uh, to its uh, product. And let's say your code, you know for a fact that it's working nicely with a specific version. Let's say version 1.0. And later, this version is updated by them. If you want to still run the old version and not the updated one, if your project is not ready to migrate to the newer version of the dependency, you can still fetch the old ones by giving a specific tag. Or if you're leaving it like this, what this means to Cartage is Cartage the, fetch the latest version of my dependencies, the latest tags. And it says checking out attack 1.0 because that's the latest one. Uh, and it says again uh, dependency loading view has no shared framework schemes. And this happens because my tag is to, uh, to a commit that is previous to when I have added this uh, shared frameworks. So what I can do now is I can introduce a new tag that fixes this or I can re-tag my current state. Let's say I can make git tag 1.0 uh, and it complains. Like if I force it it's it was it's just updating the tag. Uh, this is not a good practice, by the way. I'm doing it here just because we're starting out. If you have a library and someone depends on on it, and it and they use let's say version one, and all of a sudden you switch uh, your references, so that version one is something new, not what they expect then they may run into a trouble and this trouble is caused by you like that so that's not cool uh, but for our demonstration purposes here it's fine to to do it like this usually you always want to increment the versions so that you once a, so that once a version becomes public you're not switching it anymore so let's push the tags once again Yeah, again the same issue, so force push again to override the tag, bad thing. So in general, force pushing and forcing commands in Git may lead you to trouble, so always be careful and force push only if you know what you're doing, otherwise you may run into trouble. L right, so let's see again. This time it has found the shared target and it's building and it's building it nicely. Right. And now maybe you're wondering, okay, but why we're building this if we are not using the generated product, the compiled product, this framework in the builds directory of Cartage? why this has to pass at all and you have asked and if you have asked yourself this question uh, it's uh, that's really good because you are correct there is no purpose of building something and waiting for it if we are not using it because as you know in Xcode this is how our, our linking happens and Xcode takes care of these builds so this is still not pre present and what we can do is instead of saying cartridge update you can pass this parameter no build which will just fetch it and check check out it and we'll do nothing more to it and this is completely fine for our setup so what are the benefits of it why not copy the frameworks why not add a build phase like a specific run script that you can um, execute every time when, you're when your target compiles. Uh, the reason for this, the reason I do it that way, 
is because now I have the source code here just as if I'm working on a Waco workspace with everything in one nice directory and you can put breakpoints and they will be valid like if something goes wrong if something happens if your app crashes all your breakpoints are working and you have a lot more information that way it's not just a compiled framework that you don't know how to what happens in it anymore it's not a black box that is closed and you have no knowledge of it here you can see the whole thing and that's the benefit that's why i prefer doing it like this and this uh, makes integration with cartridge really similar to what is possible with git sub modules you'll see them in, uh, in shortly i will show them i'll show you how you could do the same thing with uh, git sub modules but maybe for now uh, we'll leave CocoaPods to uh, like to be presented at a later stage la a later time because uh, it really is its purpose is uh, really to be used by uh, projects and in setups where depend the dependency uh, it's not gonna change that much so imagine you have a version of this thing that uh, that is your that you depend on and you're not gonna change it that much then fine you coco pots is suitable and keep in mind that these are my opinions uh, you know this is how I am seeing things uh, yours may differ and it's not no one says that there's a one right unique way that uh, makes that is more appropriate in every situation than the others but in general coco pots are really easy to be a user of them like if you want to depend on someone else's code coco pots is the easiest way to go if you're a beginner especially you're just uh, calling two or three commands and you have your workspace set up your dependencies are there it, uh, the thing that is uh, that you have to do is to actually write the code you shouldn't care about linking and nothing else CocoaPods does this automatically for you but with Cartage and get some modules, you have to dig a, a little deeper. I hope you found this content useful. In the next video, I'll show you how you can use Git and its advanced features to achieve the same setup. If you're new to this channel, you should consider subscribing if you're interested in iOS development. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.